It's time to dish the end of the road for the Saratoga meeting. Final grade one races in New York for a while this weekend at the spa led by what I think is one of the most prestigious races of the American turf. Certainly falling on some hard times lately. Speaking of the Jockey Club Gold Cup and excited to bring in the Paddock Prince, David Levitch, to talk about this grade one juggernaut. And David, I'm going to let you know right off the rip. I actually think this is getting a bum rap. Who else is supposed to be here except besides White Abario that isn't? No, I agree. Her handicap division is not very good. And at least there's eight horses in this race. I mean, Proxy's probably, <laughs> I mean, Proxy's probably a top, I would say, four horse going into the Breeders' Cup Classic. Obviously, the three year olds are stepping forward, but. As an older horse only, I think Proxy is probably one of the best. I don't, obviously, that's a little bit of an indictment on the older division, but he's a good Absolutely. horse. Um, <laughs> Rattle and Rolls, I mean, we'll talk about the race. Rattle and Roll hasn't run in a while, but there's some good horses in this race. There's a complete wild card. There's actually two wild cards in this race that we'll get to, but um, yeah, it's an eight horse field. It's not, there's no one else to really run. I don't really know. It would have been interesting because remember, we were talking in the Travers. I think some of those three year olds, they there's been kind of been like two or three that might have been the favorite in this race. Maybe. Yeah, the Pletcher nominated a few and he has uh, perhaps uh, what some might consider one of the wild cards. I, I'm guessing one of them has to be Tyson. I'm wondering yeah. who the other one is, because there's there's a few in here. It's kind of rogue uh, entries that, you know, maybe aren't as accomplished as a proxy in a rattle and roll. Uh, don't have the graphic yet, but I will tell you, I have rattle and roll as the most likely winner. Uh, mostly in part because his speed uh, figures have been consistently the fastest. Proxy has a couple good races, but to me, they're just as good as Rattle and Roll. Rattle and Roll's done it more. Uh, all that said, I think Rattle and Roll could be an underlay. So I'm eager to hear how you're actually thinking of maybe playing this race because it's it's pretty competitive. Yeah, I completely agree with you about Rattle and Roll. If you look at buyer speed figures, his last five races have been in 100 or 101. So basically, he's running the same races. I'm sure you're looking at different speed figures, but he's running the same races that I, on my figures that he runs every time. He hasn't ran since July. Another thing I'll say about him, I didn't look at the track trend yet for July 1st at Ellis Park, but that's when that track was so speed favoring. I don't know for that exact day, so I can't say if it was speed favoring that day, but he did make up a lot of ground. And the Stephen Foster to a horse in West Willpower, who's ex he probably was the best older horse in the country before he got hurt, I would say, coming into the summer. So, yeah, he's a very consistent horse. And Tyson is the one wild card, obviously. I don't – this is a really random entrant. I mean, he's never <laughs> he's never run – he's only run on synthetic track. He broke his maiden at Gulfstream over a year ago, and then he's been at Woodbine. He's by Tap It. He's got speed. I would think they're going to use his speed because they're probably not going to want to get dirt kicked in his face being his first time on dirt. But I like that Josie Carroll's taking a shot in here because, I mean, what, what do you got to lose? It's a grade one. The, the older dirt horses aren't great. It's going to be interesting to see how he does. He hasn't even trained on dirt. So I guess it's more of just you're going to have to hope that they think he can run on dirt. You can't. There's yeah. no. I mean, he's by tap it out of a smart strike mare. It's hard to imagine he can't. But the other thing is, a little market. negative about him, if you're looking at the other way, Todd Pletcher trained him in his first race at Gulfstream Park, and he ran him on the synthetic. And Todd Pletcher obviously wants dirt horses. So him running, and he won the race, but him running in March last year on the synthetic, I don't know what to think, but I think he's a cool, interesting wild card. And then you mentioned Bright Future. I don't know what to do with this horse because he was so awful in the Brooklyn in his only race without Lasix. And I'm not a huge Lasix on, Lasix off guy, but his only race without Lasix, he was atrocious. And then he comes back with Lasix going two turns again, and he runs a career best 100 by your speed figure. So I don't know if the Brooklyn was just too far, wasn't his day, no Lasix. He obviously can't run on Lasix today. I don't know what that horse He's He's obviously had talent in the past. He beat Giant Game by three lengths. Um, now, Time for US. I was looking at the pace projector. They have Bright Future. I don't want to say alone on the lead, but they have him as the speediest and, and some others right behind him. Looking at the Brisnet pace ratings, he's not the fastest early. Uh, I mean, we're from the outside post with Javier. I mean, I, I feel like they're probably not going to languish. I don't know that they're going to want to go straight to the front, though. But that also wins races at Saratoga, and we saw it happen with Randomized two weeks ago. Uh, I mean, do you think he's 
part of the early pace? Is he a middle mover? I think he's part of the early. I I I, I don't know what Tyson's going to do. His paces haven't been super fast when he's on the lead. I would think Tyson's probably going to go just based on being on dirt the first time. I think Bright Future will be right there. And also going a mile and a quarter, like you said, you have such a long run up to the first turn. So if he breaks well, you have so much time to figure out what you want to do. There's not any set speed balls in here. So if Tyson can't handle the dirt for some reason early, I mean, I could see Bright Future right on the lead. I guess Duke of Love. Duke of uh, Love, yeah. I guess the other Josie Carroll. Or Josie, you know, it's nice of Josie Carroll to fill up the entry box at Saratoga. It's very, I, I didn't even notice she had another horse in the race. Yeah, and uh, I mean, both could show speed. I, I would I would think Duke of Love would be the one to be in front of the, the uncoupled stable mate. And then depending on what Bright Future does, uh, all of this I have to think is music to the connections of Proxy and Rattle and Roll, though. They absolutely need pace to, to run into. Yeah, and another one other horse to mention about the speed could be Warrior Johnny. He set the pace going seven. I mean, he well, didn't set the pace. He was on the pace basically going seven and a half at Churchill in June when he had that huge comeback win. So, you know, he's another horse he could probably be forward. I prefer – I think Rattle and Roll is a better horse than Proxy, but I like that Proxy's more in recent form. I, my own a quarter off a two-month layoff is not a crazy ass, but it's, it's not something I love. Um Proxy's a very consistent horse, just toss to Stephen Foster, where, and I brought up Rattle and Roll making up ground in that race. He made up no ground. He was terrible that whole race. He'll got you wanted no part of being there. He did come back and beat a really weak field in the Monmouth Cup, but he's overall, right. he's a super consistent horse. So he's been in the money 14 out of 18 times. I think it's a coin flip between the two, honestly. I think whichever one offers better value is probably the one you're supposed to take. And the only, uh, I think the only, well, we haven't mentioned either Unbridled Bomber uh another one who wouldn't be impossible uh to show some speed down inside and then clapton uh who did get a good figure in the suburban at a mile and a quarter uh when chasing charge it uh, and actually have some pace that could come back to him here uh to me there's there's no total throwouts here i i guess the two would be the one i like least uh unbridled bomber because you know i feel like especially when i do fair odds you kind of got to have some horse that you give the littlest chance to, but I mean, really no one would shock me. Yeah. I don't think Clapton's impossible. He looks like a type horse. So you probably want to use underneath. Um, I think I read in an article, he's these connections are the people that buy horses and send them to the Dubai um, carnival, that whole meet yeah. in Dubai. So I'm guessing they'll run him here and then they'll ship him over to Dubai. He did run well in the suburban, but charge it came back to, have a no-show in the um, Whitney, so I don't Whitney. really know. Charge is obviously a Belmont horse at this point. He's only run big <laughs> races at Belmont. I don't know what it is with him, but he's obviously not in this race, so there's no reason to talk about him. But, yeah, I don't I don't like Unbridled Bomber, and I probably wouldn't use Duke of Love. But outside of that, if you have a strong opinion with anybody else, I definitely wouldn't talk you off of it. Yeah, I, th I think I'm leaning Tyson just on the anticipated price. Uh, you know, not that Manny Franco's any slouch, but he doesn't take the money some of the other bigger names do. And then obviously he's had a I'm, huge second half of the meet too. He started off super slow. Meet. Yeah, he started off super slow, and he's got real hot though. That's probably like two to three weeks. Okay, yeah, and I'm just looking at, at the numbers. I shouldn't say great meet, but yeah, I, I see 30 wins, and that's that's pretty stout because um, I think two of the best, absolute best in the country are riding there regularly. So. Uh, you know, after that to win 30 is good. But yeah, Josie Carroll's not a name that's going to attract a lot of money. But, uh, you know, in, in a year we, I mean, this older group is is below par for sure. So uh, love that she's taking a shot. And, you know, if Tyson ends up taking a bunch of money, maybe rattle and roll ends up being the play uh, at three or four to one. But, you know, I think Tyson at twice that price would be the pick for me. Yeah, I I haven't really dove in in terms of who I'm going to pick yet. I'm, I'm interested to see the morning line on who will be the favorite proxy or rat on roll. If I had to make a pick right now, I'd probably lean towards proxy just because of the recency. And I'm definitely going to use Tyson. I'm probably going to spread in this race in the um, horizontal or the pick fours and pick fives. So I'd probably go with proxy. You know, in another race, too, I know we weren't supposed to talk about it, but I'm going to bring no, it up. Please, it's, the, it's the Pacific Classic. We got a big um, yeah. a big battle this weekend of three-year-olds versus older horses in yeah. California. Go Rocky Arabian Ryan. Knight, uh, does he step back up after the half school? or? I don't know. I think I, he I, definitely. I'm definitely against Go Rocket Ride. Uh, just the, 
it's the old wedding funeral thing. I mean, on principle, I completely whiffed on him in the Haskell at whatever he was, 10, 12 to one. And now he's the morning line favorite for this race. It, I just, I can't. Yeah, I'm with you on him. I think he's an exceptionally good horse, but I'm not going to pick him and bet him as the favorite in this race. You also have Skinner, who's also was a very talented horse. He's running in this race. I yeah. mean, if you forget about the funded, he was probably the best older horse in California before he ran just terrible in the San that Diego. Was so, that was Charger esque. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I, don't I, don't do. I don't know what to do with him. No, agreed. I mean, it's, and then the, you have the price kind of it. That's one of those weird things on the price. Like, okay, I can draw a line through it and forgive him, but with those connections, if he's dead on the board, like you don't want him anyway. So no, you want no part of him. Whereas, you know, let maybe lesser known connections when they're dead on the board, that's just well, they're getting ignored because it's XYZ trainer. But yeah, with Bob, like if he's well met, the money's gonna show up. Yeah, and I I'm with you on Arabian night. If he's not I haven't seen the morning line yet. I don't know if it's out yet. If yeah, go rocket rides the five to two five, and then Arabian Nights three to one. I would take Arabian Night head to head in this race, just second oh, off absolutely. the layoff. Yeah. But you know, I, I thought he ran well in the Haskell. I mean, I'm, I'm a little concerned that Mage was so dull. Um, you know, I mean, the whole thing was, oh, this is a prep and go rocket ride was best. But, you know, Mage made a move and held strongly for second. So to me, if he had moved forward, you'd be like, oh, well, look what came out of that race. But man, that was not that was not a good Travers for Mage. Arabian Knight was – he was kind of just goofy in the race, too. He was goofy going into the first turn, kind of rank. Yeah. Um, I feel like Baffert's going to have him much more professional for this race, second off the layoff. And, you know, honestly, if you look at his form, he's never run two straight races. It's always – he ran at Keeneland, break, Oakland, break. Then he ran in the Haskell. So, this is his first time putting two races back-to-back. -back. So, there might be a little concern about the distance, but he's going to be in front. Pratt's coming to ride him, which is – I don't know if Johnny V had made other prior commitments, but it's interesting that Pratt, I don't know if Baffert specifically asked for Pratt, but Pratt's mm -hmm. going to ride him. So I would take him and the three-year-olds. And then um, it's going to be interesting to see um, some of these other horses do, including Skinner. I don't know what to do with Skinner. His last race wasn't great, but maybe he just needed a start and he can improve off that. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of voodoo seemingly going on in the spring with him and the, the derby scratch. And then, you know, they pulled up stakes all together. So probably did need a race and that's an example where with you know with sheriffs the money isn't necessarily going to show if if he's ready i mean because there's some clear alternatives in the pacific classic so uh i i take a look if if he gets completely ignored now going into this weekend uh i have white abario and archangelo one two in my breeders cup classic rankings and then a bunch of these horses who are running this weekend all behind them but in my mind Maybe if Arabian Night freaks, I could see him jumping up from a in a you know classic contender standpoint. But otherwise, like even if Proxy wins impressively, I can't personally see moving ahead of either of those other two. What do you think? I completely agree with you. I would probably honestly, I know why Barrio ran a massive race in the Whitney, but if you force me to do a top two, I would probably put Archangelo one over White Barrio. I'm, no, I'm sure they're both gonna. Yeah. I know White Barrio's training up. I'm sure Archangelo will train up, but right. I think I after this weekend, I, I think Archangelo likes the distance better, so that's a feather in his cap. I thought the Whitney was spectacular, though. So it was spectacular. It's, it's those two for me for now, and you know we'll we'll see who develops, but. I mean, the classic as a whole, you'll get a better gauge this weekend. If all these three-year-olds run around in California, I, I don't know what to do with Forte. He was not good. He never looked comfortable in the Travers. I saw he actually might train up to the race, too. So I'm just hoping all these horses show up in the Travers. I mean, the um, classic, and we get like a 12-horse field with a bunch of three-year-olds, and it's just an No, it'd be great. Race. I mean, last yeah. year was, you know, all about the superstar, and it was – you know, how are you going to bet underneath? Or at least that's how I have. That was still it. the most fun race I've ever watched for about seven furlongs. <laughs> I mean, the, the, was... how fast they were going, just two good horses like that was fun to watch. But yeah, I agree yeah. with you. It was whoever was going to come second last year. All right. One last question. Oh, dear. I promised you I wouldn't be an asswipe. Did I fulfill my promise? You did. You've been, you've okay. behaved well. You've behaved well today. It's the last week of Saratoga and you've been on your best behavior. 
Yeah, well, I am uh, very much looking forward to uh, action returning to Louisville in a few weeks. Definitely miss going to the 14th, races. right? Uh, is it that soon? I guess I, I won't think be it's there the 14th. I'm going to Don't Woodbine. I thought it was the week after. No, I think it's the 14th with Bach. Mm-hmm. Or, no, you I'm might gonna, be right. I'm going to miss it if it's that day. but You might be right. Yeah. I know Bach opens on the 14th. That's what everybody's waiting no, for. No, no, you're right, because 14, 21, 28 would be Churchill and then Keeneland the next week. So Yeah. I thought I thought they were the same day. Yeah, I know I'm mm-hmm. really looking forward to Churchill's meet. They, I know we don't talk about Kentucky Downs because of all the issues with the takeout, but their races, they have a lot of horses running, and I guess it'll be a good prelude for the uh, Churchill meet on the turf. It looks like there'll be big fields. Turf is back. I saw the turf looking good at fairgrounds, too, so good to, good to see grass. And it'll be interesting. I mean, a lot of horses had to scratch. Uh, you know, they've been off the turf a lot at Naira, so – Definitely be eager to really? see where, where some of those show up. Yeah. Have they ran a day at Naira where it's been on the turf fully since the meet start? I don't even – it doesn't even feel like it at this point. It's been, I mean, Very it obviously brutal. has happened. It's been brutal. Yeah. No. It's uh, – I know some people looking forward to turning the page. Uh, but one of the things not to criticize, to bring it back to the beginning of this, I mean, to me, yeah, the Gold Cup talent depth-wise – yeah, no life is good, no flight lines. But, I mean, to me, like, the horses running this weekend, other than White Abario, are all the leaders of the division. I completely agree. And the um, Jockey and Club get Gold Cup. year at Del Mar, so. Yeah, and I completely agree. The Jockey, Gold, Gold, Jockey Club Gold Cup was also a really good race last year with uh, the Mod Horse win in American Rebel. It was kind of a similar feel. There were, like, eight or nine. It was a good betting race, and that's how I kind of feel this year. This race hasn't had the – "Quote unquote sexiest horses running in the last couple of years, but they have. It's been it's been a good move because the fields have been good. Yep, awesome. All right, well, we will wrap up the Saratoga meeting next week. Uh, put a bow on that, and uh, maybe I'll turn. I'll twist your arm to get you to look at Colonial. Um, probably not. not. No, no. stakes. Virginia when Derby. It, is that the last day? Last week? Yeah. Who's Next that? Yeah. It's not out yet, though, obviously. So, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe we'll peek at it. Well, well, we'll find somewhere that's not Kentucky Downs to talk about. Oh, well, we're going for Colonial then. There you go. All right. He's the Prince. I'm Ed. Thanks, everybody.